Hi, my name is Emily and this is my dog Chibi. She is a seven-year-old Pembroke Walsh Corgi and today I'm going to tell you the story about our experience with hip dysplasia. First of all, what is hip dysplasia? You may have heard of this disease before. It's pretty common actually in a lot of large breed dogs or older dogs. For us, we actually came across Chibi being diagnosed with hip dysplasia when she was just a one-year-old puppy. Hip dysplasia is a skeletal abnormality that affects the hip joint in dogs. How it's diagnosed is by taking an x-ray of the hip area and a veterinarian can take a look at it. So in Chibi's case, you could see that only 10% of the ball of the joint was actually in the socket, meaning that every time she was walking and there was friction that was occurring in the hip joint, it was causing her pain. In a properly formed hip joint, there should be nearly frictionless movement, meaning that there would be no pain caused to the dog when it's walking or running around. When Chibi was diagnosed, one of my first questions was, what was the cause of this? What's the reason why she's diagnosed, especially at such a young age? The tricky thing is there's a lot of different factors that can contribute to hip dysplasia. Genetics, nutrition, exercise, growth rate, muscle mass, these are all things that can contribute to whether your dog ends up with hip dysplasia or not. In Chibi's case, because of the severity of the hip dysplasia, our orthopedic vet told us that this was primarily a genetic condition that was passed down from her parents. For large breed dogs, inappropriate nutrition can contribute to it. Now that I also have a large breed puppy, I have learned a little bit more about nutritional differences between small dogs and big dogs. So in Chibi's case, that might have not been as large of a factor because she's a small dog, but for large breed dogs like German Shepherds, they have to grow at a much slower pace and if they grow a little bit too fast or if there's improper nutritional balances in the food that they're eating, that can also contribute to hip dysplasia. The dog's health and body condition is also an important factor, so often with overweight or obese dogs, there's a lot of strain and weight that is put on those hip joints, and so that can also affect things. Keeping your dog a healthy and trim lean weight is really important. So how do you know if your dog has hip dysplasia? For us, the first telltale sign was Chibi started limping. She actually had a lot more symptoms that potentially pointed to hip dysplasia, but I just didn't know what to look for. Throughout most of her puppyhood, she was actually quite low energy, and it was really odd because Pembroke Walsh Corgis are a very high energy, high drive breed that typically run around a lot. They are bred for herding sheep, so they're very agile and very active. But for some reason, Chibi has always been sort of low energy, never really into going on long walks, playing with other dogs, and looking back on it now, I think that probably was one of the first signs that she was in physical discomfort because she just didn't want to be active, and that is quite unusual for a high drive, high energy breed. Once Chibi was diagnosed, we had a variety of options given to us by our orthopedic surgeon. There was the femoral head ascectomy, FHO surgery, which is basically a procedure where the surgeon goes in and removes the ball of the joint, and then the remaining scar tissue that forms sort of acts as a false joint, and therefore the improperly formed joint is removed, and the friction that is being caused is also removed, and then the dog would no longer have pain in that joint. Another option that was much more expensive was a full hip replacement. We did not choose to go this route because it's often used for larger or older dogs and Chibi was young and very small and so we thought that she would have a pretty good chance of recovery through rehab with the FHO procedure. So we ended up moving forward with the FHO and she had it done on both of her hips. We started with the left side which was a little bit more severe and the side that she started limping on. We began the rehab process on that left side and then the plan was to go ahead and do the right side FHO surgery when she started showing signs that that hip was also needing surgery. And about a year later, she needed to have surgery on her right hip. This whole process with the two surgeries and all the rehabilitation that came afterwards was probably a good three years. So she was one year old when she had her first surgery. Probably when she was about four was when she was able to start going on long walks and hikes with us again and really build up that strength in her core and in her muscles through the rehabilitation that she could sort of act like a normal dog again. That's a really long time for a young dog to be going through rehab, having pain management, taking medication. One of the things that really helped us was giving her joint supplements. I really liked giving Chibi these shoes that really help to improve mobility, it helps alleviate joint pain, and really aids in long-term joint health. 
for her, she had just a myriad of orthopedic issues. Everything in the body is connected physically, and for her, she ended up tearing both of her CCLs during the rehab process because she was off weighting on the hip and putting extra pressure on other parts of her body. Having the hip and joint supplements and helping to manage her chronic pain was really important through the use of supplements. The great news is Chidi is now 7 years old and for the last few years she's been able to live a relatively normal dog life, meaning she's been able to travel with us, go on long walks on the weekend, go on relatively easy hikes when we go on road trips, and all of that is in thanks to the surgeries that she had and the years of rehabilitation and building strength back in her body. Largely, she's able to do everything that any other dog could do. She can walk, run, jump, play with other dogs, and although it's a long and arduous process, it's not the end of the world, and dogs with hip dysplasia can still live a long, happy, and full life well into their senior years. 